Good evening, mortals, and welcome back to Rogue Lords. We have found ourselves here. We are in Chapter 3, going to the Sanctuary of the Sancta Lumen here. And really, a lot has come up. Yeah, I've seen a lot of your comments here and a lot of things that have come up uh, from the Rogue Lords family talking about different strategies going into the game. So we're going to definitely be focusing on those things moving forward. One of the things is that we want to make sure we get as many relics as possible um, because relics, of course, are really useful, much in the same way that uh, in Slay the Spire they are really useful because uh, they completely change how your game is being played, essentially. So, again, we've got the Ritual Dagger, dagger here for Bloody Mary, which means that uh, she's going to be increasing her HP and SP after every single combat by two. Um, I love this one for the White Lady, um, that she no longer has the recharge skill, but gets two um, skills recharged every turn. And then, of course, we've got this lovely one that's been that's been helping us along the way here about uh, every time an enemy dies he gets four bitterness the headless horseman and in doing so um, he gets himself to let's see every time he gets hit and takes damage he gains this, uh, a bit of bitterness that he can use towards his devouring charge so getting that right away is such a useful skill as well so we're gonna be looking towards that um, we've done really good with our traits here. I think there's only a couple... There's, yeah, there's really only Hemophiliac for uh, Bloody Mary being a negative trait here. But we've mostly gotten positive traits going in here. And I think really um, the, the thing we're lacking on in this run-through, which hopefully will, will be a very good run-through and we will do everything we intend to do here. But the thing we're lacking on a bit is actually leveling up our skills. Now, obviously, we want to be doing that by gaining uh, more than one version of the skill. So, for example, getting two more slashes would upgrade this. But apparently, we can also upgrade these things as well, or get better versions of these by upgrading the terror that we're doing. So, we're currently at terror level two. So, we've been doing pretty good with the uh, the story-based events that have been happening. Um, we'll see if that can continue moving forward. We'll see what happens. Um, let's see, here we go. It's not nine souls. We're doing okay, devil mode. One of the other things that I realized you could do with devil mode, and I wonder if it'll show us in the devil's thing here, is we can, yeah, we can replace one secondary activity with another. So if uh, we get a secondary activity that shows up and we don't really particularly care for that, we can re-roll it into something different. And of course, the portals are another way that we can really be um, jumping about one thing that I had not thought about, because you have to, I believe the portals connect two like abilities or like um, events together. So you can connect one fight to another fight, or you can connect, connect one story element to another story element. But um, one sort of strategy they brought up uh, in their live stream, the Rogue Lords live stream, is that you can actually give the Grim Reaper one of your skills and then create a portal and immediately go to the Grim Reaper again to collect that skill so you can actually sort of jump forward and really boost yourself up that way so definitely gonna have to try if that soon up with carrying out my orders, oh my gosh I'm talking to the people devil chill it's cool all right and let's see here and then we also have Warhorn here which I totally forgot about each time the disciples pl uh, the three disciples play in a turn plus two damage for the rest of the combat which is gonna be cool because if we can get um, that was damage, right? Did I just read that correctly? Oh, anytime they play anything. So if we can get one skill from each, everybody's going to do plus two damage. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be doing here. So not particularly fond of this right here, but what we could potentially do is create a portal through it. Let's see. So double the diabolic essence cost of the devil's powers here. Don't like that. Um, and, of and of course, upon arrival in this zone, you lose 50 souls, which, I mean, actually, ironically, doesn't really affect us too much here. But what we could do is fill up our Diabolic Essence at the Styx Foundation here, create a portal, jump to this Styx Foundation, and remove the Hemophiliac from Bloody Mary, and totally take out this event entirely. 
and then maybe we'll go to the sacrificial altar grim reaper book chapter i think that might be our way to go so without further ado god damn it lady you're a ghost go through the buildings what is so complicated about that all right let's go here oh and there's a terror event here i forgot to read what that was dang it that putrid smell that deadly oh. silence they receive I feel extra right essence well more. this is good i'm glad i clicked that one all right good 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 all right let's go and do this actually i think we're going to do this backwards I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of like her negative trait. Waters of the sticks and then because we are, we're not going to get max essence from this because we're only going to get 11 essence, not 20. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one, make the portal, jump up to the next one, and then replenish our essence. I think that's what we're going to go for. Remove all the disciples' negative traits. Yes. Well, isn't that wonderful? So let me just double check that that worked correctly. Yes, she has no more hemophiliac. All right, so let's go ahead and enter the devil mode. I shall forge the world in my image. Oh, interesting. Wait a minute. Can I not jump to this one then? Well, that seems odd. Because uh, it has to be to another in the line. Oh. Well, actually, may maybe we'll jump twice. Maybe we'll go here to the combat, and then we'll jump up to the sticks. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? It's only six. I think that's pretty fair. All right, as they step through the portal, your disciples will tr be transported directly to the region it's linked to. An isolated farm. All right. Let's get into this. Let's see, do I want a terror effect in one night? That might be nice. Um, we can get another skill, or we can get souls, which we're really low on souls at the moment. I'm tempted to get another skill, though if we don't get a skill that we have already, then we might not be boosting ourselves. Hmm, 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 hmm. Do I want a terror effect, or do I want to attack discreetly? Well... In theory, we're going to be getting the Grim Reaper soon, so let's go ahead and go for the Souls option. Because we might be able to get things from him that we really want. Oh, God. I don't like any of you guys. Okay, what do we got going on here? So, we just have this guy attacking. Let's see, you're, you're preparing to apply a, blown, a bonus and prepare a powerful attack the next turn. Let's see, he's got fervor right now. The holder loses as, mu as many HP as they inflict. Oh. Interesting, but if they get us, um, if they get one of us vulnerable, they recover all their HP. That's weird. And then this one's tortured. Each time the holder suffers damage, he earns plus one damage. Well, that would be nice to, uh, you know, steal. Let's see here. That actually might be really nice to steal. Why don't we go ahead and just take you. Can I take that? No, I can't. Dang it. It must be it must be one of those things that is just set to them. Okay, well, let's take that back. So we can't give ourselves any boosts or anything like that. This guy's gonna attack him. And he's he's not even attacking him, he's just weakening. So, who do we want to begin with? Um, we could actually probably take out this Inquisitor pretty quickly with, uh, by attacking his SP. And then, let's see here. How much would it cost to lower that? Do it yourself. About that much? Yeah, let's do that. The only limit to my power and let's my go ahead and have you... Inflict 8 to 12 SP. That's one. Um, let's see here. Hmm. Yeah. Let's go ahead and use that. Oh, this will use it on all of them. Yes. No, target one enemy. That's what I was right. Okay, I was right. And so you can use... Let's see here. This attacks all enemies, so maybe we'll go with that because they're all weakest with their SP. So let's see if we can take him out. There we go. 
we'll get the depression on there. Um, and so now he's at the highest level here. So actually, can we use... Should we use our one left to do Devouring Charge? Let's get a Steel HP. Hmm. Let's see here. What do we want to do with our last two ability points here? Dirty again. Why don't we go with using our Devouring Charge... We want to take out the martyr. Yeah, let's work on getting the martyr down. There we go. And then let's go and use you. Should we do torment? Mask of opulence is just going to be healing. Nobody's hurt yet, so let's go for torment. There we go. All right, looks good. What the heck is sentencing? Well, this is interesting. Okay. What has he got? Upon expiration, inflict 50 HP. Hmm. Well, I don't want that at all. What I'd rather have happen is maybe we just business. move this over to you. Over to you? Over to you? It really doesn't matter. I am irresistible. Yeah. And then... Yeah, Shell's not gonna really help him in that regard, but Shell is any damage suffered, so he's gonna be taking less from everything. Which, ironically, maybe we want to take that for ourselves. So if we do on guard here, everything's gonna be coming to him. And... You know what? I am just gonna to take business. that. Let's take the shell. Reality is but a toy to me. Oh, I took because I've got a little bit there. I should have done on guard. I think I just got the on guard or the shell from the on guard there. Um. Yeah, that's fine. The dice were loaded from the start. That's okay. All right. So let's see here. We've got three left. We can go for slash. Let's see. I don't think bleeding's gonna do much in this regard. It's gonna do five to eight HP every single time. Plus, also, I just realized they've got he's got sentencing, so I do not want to use bleeding on what him yet. Game are we playing? Um, let's see here. Should we reduce the impending attack from anybody? That'd be good. Why don't we go ahead and do that on you? We can also use her Cursed Mirror and then Twist of Fate. Maybe we'll go for that. We'll replenish that and then Twist of Fate. So that'll reduce that twice. Okay, so he's going to take all the damage. Okay. He is one away from being able to use his attack again. Hmm, hmm, what do we do? So do we do... Let's see, I should probably put on the Mask of Opulence. For a random wounded disciple, depending on where they're weakest. So that's going to be him. And... We can go ahead and inflict XP damage and reduce the impending attack by 10. Let's go ahead and use that on you. I like the sound of that. That's going to help. And then we got one left. Who should, I kill? should I go ahead and focus on introspection? Get his abilities back? Yeah. Let's go ahead and use our one point to do that. Yes. Alright. So I'm liking the healing. That's all good stuff. Alright, so that took him way down. So what I'm thinking is we could probably take him out through physical means here because she could attack him twice why don't we go for that there we go now you're vulnerable what are you you're gonna attack everybody oh you're gonna purge everybody they're removing statuses and prepare a powerful attack for the next turn well maybe not we'll see 
Let's see, this is two, this is two. I might as well just go for slash. There we go. All right. This is working for us. And let's see, we've got... He can do Devouring Charge. Why don't we go ahead and do that here? Just go for it, because that'll heal him up. And something happened there, and I'm not quite sure what that was supposed to do. <laughs> was he supposed to steal things from us? Steal our abilities or something? I don't know. But why don't we go ahead and go with this one? And then let's do this. Well, that worked out well. Souls rotten with vice. Fun. All right, so we could either go to combat here and do that again and then do the sacrificial altar but I think I would like to boost our diabolic essence again so right, let's jump up here yourself. my power is absolute go in the demonic portal go in the demonic portal there we go all right oh good so there's actually some extra stuff going on here. So we got a hovel, which is a story element. Do I want to... Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll get, do this first and then I'll go to the sticks. Okay. So we need stealth. That is 100% our Bloody Mary, I believe. Oh, no. Why did I pick him? <laughs> I didn't mean to click him. No! All right. Your disciples have to go around several demon hunter camps on the way, but finally reach Havel, the former bastion of evil. The witches who still live here are on tender hooks when they see you arrive. The traitors who are about to make a pact with the enemy to save their miserable lives. It's time to remind them who their one true master is. In this place, your witches won a stunning victory in the Battle of the Thousand Illusions in earlier days. You gave them this region as a reward for their loyalty. But you can always take it back if they persist in their falseness. Despite their betrayal, these witches are still experts in black magic. If you let headless horsemen execute them, their curses could harm him. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and just like maximize this, this for five. Let's and let's force the witches to serve only me. You give the orders, I carry them out. As Headless Horseman draws near the witches instinct the as they he draws near the witches instinctively back away, suddenly aware of your presence through your disciple, they still remember the horrors you're capable of dispensing. They tremble as they kneel before your power. Their will to betray you has completely evaporated. The witches are now at your mercy. What will you do with them? Let's see. Do we want to pool their magic to put a collective curse on the demon hunters? Exact an offering to your glory or devour their souls? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm guessing that means we get souls. I'm guessing that... The offering to my glory would have to do with my diabolic essence, and then I can also pull the magic to put a collective curse on the witch hunt on the demon hunters. I'm kind of curious to see what that means. So let's go for it. The witches gather to initiate a black magic ritual. You add your weight to the curse so it attains such a credible power that it will be able to decimate all the demon hunters threatening the village. That's a blow your enemies will find it hard to recover from. Finally, fresh souls to torment. Nice. Okay, so good. We got souls from it. I defile. I corrupt. And I also pervert. terror. Excellent. So that means the next three places we could potentially go. Actually, so this is going to be... So the next two places we can go where no essence is consumed for the first use of the devil's power. So that's going to be against a boss, which would be really useful. Um, if you sacrifice a skill, you'll get two new slots instead of just one. Oh, that is also really good. I might actually go for that because that's going to be way more useful than... I mean, granted, going here and having that boost is, is useful, but... Uh, setting ourselves up for success there will be nice. 
So let's go ahead and, ooh, Mind of Steel, plus three ruse and t plus 10 max spiritual points. So he can tank even more now. It worked out for the best. I accidentally clicked him, but it all worked out. All right. So what is a let's replenish our essence. All right. Sacrifice. So who are we? Who are we looking to sacrifice? We're going to get two slots for sacrificing. So who should that be? Not Bloody Mary. She's all set there. I mean, she could sacrifice one and, and max herself out. I th almost, well, he's got a slot available. She doesn't. So I'm kind of thinking, oh, I hate to sacrifice one of these, though. Hmm. Maybe I sacrifice possession? Because I've got a couple of purple level ones here, which I do want to keep. Possession's not purple level. It does steal SP, which is nice. But we could possibly find something better from sacrificing this. And then she gets all of this open to her as well. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so. Sacrifice to dominate. Let's sacrifice possession. There we go. Most excellent. The white lady's potential is strengthened and two new skill slots are open Simple to her. Mortal trinkets. You'd better find a use for them. So I can get Nightmare again, so we're one step closer. Actually, no, I apologize, because Nightmare is at the purple level, so we'd have to get three more of the white level Nightmare in order to get this, I believe? I think? I think we have to get three purple level ones in order for it to work and level up. So we could do Poltergeist, which inflicts three to four, three times four to six SP, or we could do Decadence, which replays this effect for each status the target has. Ooh, that could be good. Let's give this a shot. Why not? Actually, let's go back. Take everything you can. Okay, yeah, they're all white level anyway, so let's just go ahead and try this one out. Yes. All right. So, Grim Reaper it is. Let's go ahead and say hello to the Grim Reaper. A murder of crows takes flight as you approach, revealing a number of sacred runes on the ground. Your disciples aren't welcome counted. in this region. Ooh. I don't want to go that way then. So we're not going to deal with that combat. We're probably going to go to the sticks up here. So the next couple of things should be pretty easy, hopefully. Let's talk to the Grim Reaper and see what happens. Ah, okay. Doctor of Souls. So all those innocent souls I harvested will finally be of use. So so so. Um, as far as leveling something up, so we've got a couple of purple skills available to us. We got permutation, swap, swap the target's HP and SP. So we've seen that before but honestly we've got a pretty good balance amongst our characters here that that's not as necessary apply one dodge is kind of cool evade the first loss of hp from a skill used to target the holder hmm so that could be really good and that is oh uh, it's only two i mean it's two ability points in order to use them Shard of Psyche sounds cool. What does it do? Inflict 1 to 2 times 15 SP, apply 1 clumsiness. Oh, so whenever they use a skill, they're going to lose HP. Well, that's interesting. Um, but as far as things that we have already, what do we have? So, stabbing? No, this is 7 years bad luck. So we could get another one for her. So then all we need is one more, and then she could level that up. Spectral Torpor. Does he have that one this round? No, he doesn't. But that one is a really nice one. That applies zombie. But I could also go for... Honestly, I think maybe we'll go for the repeating abilities here. We'll go for Seven Years Bad Luck. And I think that should leave enough for Slash as well. Um, do I want these talismans? All your disciples earn plus three damage. Your max diabolic essence is set to 30. Oh, that is going to lower our diabolic essence. I don't like that. 
Each time you sacrifice a skill, you earn 80 souls. That's nice. Recuperate 15 extra Diabolic Essence at the Fountains of the Sticks, which would be nice. But, again, I think I'm going to go for skills this time through. So let's do 7 Years Bad Luck. Let's do Slash. And should we give somebody a skill? We give you a skill? Um, this is something where maybe I level up... Let's see, do I level up Mask of Torment, maybe? Um, do I level up... I don't want to. I, I I do want to level up on guard, but I don't want to get rid of that because it's so useful, even if it's only providing one provocation. Uh, oh, and it costs. It's gonna go from. Oh no, it's gonna go down at the gold level to one AP. Hmm. Same with devouring charge. But at least that one is would be much more helpful to get leveled up. Why don't we go ahead and leave Devouring Charge with him? Because On Guard by itself is still useful, um, and then we can double the, uh, the advantage that Devouring Charge will do. So why don't we do that? Yeah. Okay. I'd say we were very successful there. Alright, on to the next chapter. There's an altar to the light not far off. I can't bear its presence. My disciples arrive at the sanctuary. There they discover a priest who no longer preaches. He tells them that he took part in the creation of a monster who then returned to dispossess him of his inspiration, Caleb. We offer him a chance to take his revenge on his creature. He accepts. My disciples, on the pretext of making a trap, take one of his hairs and ask for a fragment of Caleb. He gives them a bit of the wood used in his making. The two elements of the ritual secure inside the puppet. My disciples and the priest go their separate ways. The latter leaves for the town of New Florentine to find Caleb, and my servants set off for an abandoned farm. All right, let's see what happens next. Fear my rage. All right, so, okay. Got a couple of good options. So, I don't think, okay, let's take a look here. I don't think we're going to go to here, because I all Disciples begin the combat with a skill locked for two turns. Sounds awful. What I'm thinking is, let's go to the Sticks. Let's go to the Grim Reaper. Um, you'll discover a trait for one of your Disciples. That sounds cool. Um, oh, that's also there. Oh, traits all around. But if we go to the Grim Reaper, we can get our skill back, and then we can go to this event and kind of build up through there. Yeah, let's do that. Sticks it is. Be on your guard, disciples. Oh. Even you are not impervious to the snares of this swamp. Let's go to the event first. Uh, yeah, we've got enough. Let's do this. Okay, so we're going to be using Ruse and Temptation. So who's best at those? Hmm. Well, Headless Horseman seems to be best at both of those. So why don't we go for that? And that's also going to boost his health points. Tank, tank, tank. Here we go. In Sick Tree, your disciples meet a vampire who seems to be running away from something. You there. You look like you could help me. I need to escape from the Sanctuary Lumen. Erase my tracks and I'll compensate you handsomely. Foiling the Sanctuary Lumen is tempting, but the vampire's impertinence angers you. It's as if he didn't recognize your disciples. He's certainly hiding something. All of the creatures of darkness can recognize your disciples at first glance, or at least feel your presence through them. This vampire didn't even notice who he was addressing. Either something has scared him to the point of impairing his senses, or he's not what he pretends to be. 
Helping this vampire escape won't cost you anything, and you're intrigued by his offer of a reward. But Headless Horseman would rather unravel his secret and put him in his place. Let's go and discover his secret. Right. Do it yourself. My power is absolute. While pretending to help the insolent vampire, Headless Horseman convinces him to talk about himself and obtains his identity. He's not a vampire at all, but a former hireling of the Sanctuary Lumen. When he learns this, your disciple throws himself on him to slit his throat, but the fake vampire just laughs. Go ahead and try to kill me. I know you won't succeed. I've discovered the secret of immortality. That's why the Sanctuary Lumen is looking for me. They're the ones who asked me to find the formula. Now they want their due. You see, the main ingredient is a human heart from a victim of the White Plague. They forced me to contaminate so many innocent people. They don't deserve this knowledge, and I don't deserve immortality. If it's death he's looking for, Headless, headless Horseman will all be, only be too happy to oblige. Hmm. Let's go ahead and risk not spending the extra points. We're at 90%, fingers crossed. Let's convince him to turn against the Sanctuary Lumen. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Every time, every time we have, like, so close and it always fails if we don't use our Diabolic Essence. <sighs> okay. Despite Headless Horseman's insistence on the threat posed by the Sanctuary Lumen, the Immortal refuses to turn against his former employers. He flees, terrified at the idea of facing them. You let him go. The Sanctuary Lumen will, ta will catch him eventually. As soon as they do, he'll regret his refusal to oppose them. I failed, Master. What's my punishment? Do you want me to bring your reflection to life? It should be able to sort things out, unlike you. You're insulting an officer. I hope you're prepared to suffer the consequences. Oh, he lost some stealth, and she lost some ruse. Oh, idiot, that's harsh. Oh boy, lost some scare too. 